Welcome to this demo of Routinator, RPKI relying party software written by Nelnet Labs in the Rust programming language. In this demo, I'll be walking you through the installation of Routinator and setting up a basic configuration. After this, I'll walk you through the user interface and we'll set up monitoring. Routinator is a full featured package that is designed to run as a service. It periodically fetches certificates and root origin authorizations from the global RPKI repositories and rigorously validates everything for integrity and authenticity. It then exposes the verified statements about route origins via the RTR protocol to your routers, as well as some useful formats such as JSON and CSV. There's also an API you can talk to, as well as a user interface and Prometheus monitoring endpoints. Getting started with Routinator is really easy. We provide binary packages for Debian and Ubuntu, as well as Red Hat Enterprise Linux, CentOS, and Rocky Linux. You can also run with Docker or build Routinator using Cargo, the package manager for Rust. When choosing a system to run Routinator on, make sure that you have one gigabyte of available memory and about four gigabytes of available disk space. This will give you enough margin to grow as the repositories get bigger over time. Because RPKI validators fetch data via HTTPS and rsync, you need to make sure that your firewall allows outgoing connections on ports 443 and 873. For this demo, I'll be using a Debian 10 virtual machine with an x86 architecture running with two cores and two gigabytes of RAM. I'll be showing you how to install Routinator using a binary package for Debian and Ubuntu, as that is the most common method used. There are a number of additional things you can do to run Routinator, such as creating a separate user, but I'm going to go for the most basic installation that you can adjust for your own specific environment. All of the binary packages are available in the Enelnet Lab software package repository. To add it, I'm going to add a line specifically for Debian 10 Buster to etc apt sources.list. Note that we also support Debian 9 Stretch and Debian 11 Bullseye, as well as release candidates through the proposed channel. And for Ubuntu, we currently support version 16, 18, and 20. Next, we're going to add the public key for the repository. We'll fetch the key using wget and then add it to the list of trusted keys using the apt key command. If everything works out, you'll see a confirmation with OK. And after this is done, we can do a sudo apt update to refresh the repository. With these preparations done, we can now run a sudo apt install Routinator to actually install the application. The next step is to initialize Routinator by installing the trust anchor locator files, also known as TALs, of the five regional internet registries. Routinator comes bundled with all of the five TALs, as well as a number of testbed TALs. If all you want to do is set up Routinator for production use, you have to type Routinator init. This will present you with a message about the errand TAL. Aaron is the only RER who wants you to explicitly read and agree to their relying party agreement. You can see the URL presented here. You should open it, read the agreement, and if everything is fine, you can proceed by running Routinator in it again with the accept Aaron RPA option. So let's go ahead and install the five tiles. You can see that the command read the configuration file, created a repository directory, and installed the five tiles in its own directory. Let's run Routinator immediately and make sure that the service launches at boot using system control enable now. Let's also see if everything works properly by checking the status. Ah, great, yes, it looks like everything is running. Now you can see that Routinator is taking its configuration file from etc routinator slash routinator.conf. Let's have a look at that file. For security reasons, by default, Routinator only serves its data on localhost, so you'll have to change this so that other machines and routers can talk to it. It'll start the RTR server on port 3323 and the HTTP server on 8323. These and many other values can be changed in the configuration file. To have a look at the default options that Routinator runs with, try entering Routinator config. 
the documentation and the man page will give you a complete overview of all of these options and you can add them to the configuration file as needed. For now, let's just open the files and make the HTTP and RTR service available on all interfaces on both IPv4 and IPv6. To do this, I'll change 127.0.0.1 into double colon, which at least on Linux systems will cover all protocols. After saving the file, Let's restart Routinator to make sure that all of the changes take effect. Now, the first time Routinator runs, it'll connect to the five trust anchors and traverse the RPKI tree to fetch all certificates and ROAS from the various repositories to build up a local cache. And currently that's about 40 repositories that contain a total of about 400 megabytes of data. The whole process should be done in about 10 minutes, but it really depends on network topology and latency. The next time, however, Routinator will only need to process the changes between what it has in the cache and what is new and changed in the repositories. By default, updates will happen every 10 minutes and they normally take about 30 seconds to complete. The easiest way to verify if Routinator has finished the initial validation is to check the status page from the HTTP server. Let's check it with curl from the command line. It looks like initial validation is still ongoing. So right now the user interface isn't available yet and nothing is being served via RTR. So routers can't connect yet. But now that Routinator is available on all interfaces, I can switch to my own computer and have a look there. So let me close my terminal window fire up a browser and open the domain name that I have set up for this demo on port 8323 using plain HTTP. Of course, if you would like to secure this more, you can easily set up a reverse proxy using something like Nginx and add a TLS certificate. This is a more robust solution for these purposes anyway. Instructions on how to do this is all available in the documentation. After refreshing a couple of times and maybe getting some coffee while the initial validation run completes, you'll see that the status page offers a lot of statistics about the last validation run. This includes when it started, when it finished, how many ROAs were processed for each trust tanker, and how many validated ROA payloads that resulted in. You'll also see detailed statistics about each RPKI repository and which connection method was used to fetch the data. Now that the status page is serving data, that also means that the user interface is available and Routinator has started serving data via RTR. Let's have a look at the UI. The user interface offers a validity checker, which is also available through the API and from the command line. You can enter any combination of AS number and prefix and Routinator will tell you what the RPKI validity of the root is, along with an explanation. Let's enter AS12654 and the prefix 93.175.147.0 slash 24. This is one of the ripe NCC routing beacons. These prefixes will always have a status valid, invalid, or unknown. So it's great to verify if your routing policies are working as expected. I chose an invalid prefix here. So you can see that Routinator doesn't just display the status, but also gives you the reason why. In this case, it's because the announcement is coming from an unauthorized AS number. In upcoming versions of Routinator, we will expand this user interface with additional functionality, such as adding root collector information, displaying related resources belonging to the same organization, as well as more and less specific announcements seen in BGP. You can see a preview of this functionality at routinator.nlnetlabs.nl. Everything that you can see and do in the user interface is directly fetched from the Routinator API, so you can build your own automation around it. Let me show you the same AS and prefix combination directly from the API, so you can see the JSON at the source of it. This data offers the route that you asked for, the validity state, the reason, the VRPs that caused the result, and of course, the timestamp of the validation run on which the result is based. The HTTP server also has endpoints for all of the validated ROA payloads themselves. So if you want them in CSV or JSON format or even RPSL, you can easily fetch them. The last thing I want to show you is the metrics endpoint, which has statistics in Prometheus format. 
To demonstrate the metrics capabilities of Routinator, let's head over to another VM running Prometheus and Grafana. Routinator exposes a very comprehensive set of metrics for all trust tankers, but also for each repository. This allows you to set up detailed monitoring and alerts. Setting up a Prometheus job for Routinator is really easy. You simply have to point it at the instance in your Prometheus configuration file and restart the service. Here on my VM running Prometheus and Grafana, let's open up the Prometheus configuration file. Setting it up is really easy in this YAML file. We can just stick with the defaults for practically everything and just give the job a name and point it to our VM on port 8323. Then just save the file and restart the Prometheus service for the changes to take effect. To see if everything worked as expected, I'll open up a browser and open the Prometheus user interface and then go to the status page and from there select target. You can see Routinator is up and metrics are being fetched. Ha, great. The last thing I want to show you is setting up a Grafana dashboard. You can set this dashboard up from scratch, of course, but we also have a template that, that you can get started with. To do this, simply head over to grafana.com and search for Routinator. You can see that the dashboard ID is 11922. Copy it and head over to your Grafana instance, hit the plus icon, and then hit import and paste the ID. Adding this dashboard now will present you with a really empty and boring page, but um, this is what it'll look like uh, after running for a week or so. You can see detailed metrics for each RPI repository, as well as statistics for all of the trust anchors. Setting up routers to fetch validated data from Routinator via the RTR protocol goes way beyond what we can show you in this demo. There's broad support from router vendors for RPKI and root origin validation, whether it's Cisco, Juniper, Nokia, Huawei, or Arista, everything's going to be covered. If you use a software solution such as BERT, FRR, or VIOS, you can also use RTR to connect to Routinator. To learn more about RPKI and how it helps make BGP routing more secure, make sure to read the documentation at rpki.readthedocs.io or join the RPKI Community Discord server where hundreds of operators exchange experiences.